everyone, it's Kate Kaltoff and welcome to a Stamping to Share Fab Friday and we're going to explore Country Lane. It's a product suite from Stampin' Up! in the 2018 Holiday Catalog and it is gorgeous. I have the catalog page right here and I'm also going to share something special with you. I have, well, a couple of things special with you. One of the things that I'm going to share with you is a little... Um, treat holder well it's kind of like a treat holder that I made for my downline who are attending an event this weekend with me and I just love 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 how it turned out and if you guys really like it I'll uh, maybe consider doing a video of it in the future the thing is I used up every last scrap of country lane designer series paper really what wasn't going into product shares which was very little um, I ended up just using it all up in this particular project. So I do have my original Country Lane Designer Series paper to show you, but my full 12 by 12 sheets are actually gone. Um, it's a beautiful paper, perfect for this time of year. The other thing I'm going to share with you is a Country Home card that I not only made for my uh, meeting swap this this month but I'm also using it in fall flare and one of the reasons I chose to use it as a demo swap is that way the demonstrators in my group who were swapping with me could have that to show their customers an example of a card that we make at fall flare so this is the card that we're going to be making and as I mentioned before I used it in my demo swap this month and it's also going to be at fall flare which we have locally here in Minnesota for um, my whole downline and I put this on so it's lots of fun and we're going to be coloring this with the Stampin' Blends and we're it's just beautiful but I did promise before we get too deep into making this card I'd show you what I'm giving my downline who are attending this weekend uh, a special event that we're having here in Minnesota and so let me show you what I'm giving them. So this is what I made for them and it turned out so beautiful because it's the little cotton paper that you see in the Country Lane Designer Series paper and it looks like this. It's just so gorgeous. And inside are the faceted dots with which do coordinate with this paper. So I I would love to um, maybe do a video on how I made this because if you didn't want to do faceted dots, let's say you're making this for a family member, it could easily fit like a gift gift card or something on that order as well. And it's just beautiful, perfect for fall gift giving. So that is what I want to show you. Hopefully not too many of my downline members are watching because I want them to sort of be surprised. But you know, I just had to share it with you because it was so pretty and it turned out so nice. But as I mentioned, it left me with no designer series paper, but that's okay. So here's the stamps that we're using today. Country Home. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And this is the beautiful card we're going to make. And of course, it's got its inside all done. I love to do the insides of my cards. And you'll notice we have a new type of linen thread. This is called, let me grab it here, our braided linen trim. So it's sort of like linen thread that has maybe five or six strands that have been all braided together and it's really beautiful. And it makes it a little easier to work with too. It's not quite so fine. But yet it still works really well on your cards. So let's go ahead and get started creating this gorgeous, gorgeous card. So the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to build our card bases, which I've already um, done. These are five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. This is soft suede paper, in case you're wondering. Stampin' Up! has two kind of specialty papers in the, um, well, they have lots of specialty papers in the holiday catalog, but they have uh, a foil. This is a new black foil that you can find in the holiday catalog, and then this is the galvanized sheets. And when you pair up the galvanized sheets at the Big Shot machine with the new tin tile embossing folder, you really get something special. So let me show you the uh, layering I did for that. Here is the Big Shot platform, and I have it ready to go. Took the thin die adapter out and have it ready to go for folders. Now, because this is one of those super thick folders, I have it um, 
so that I only need one cut plate over the top and then I ran it through. And I wanted to share with you the sizing for this. I cut my galvanized paper at two and a half by five and a quarter. And that allows me to run two through at one time. So they kind of come out looking like this. Just stunning. Now, if we lived in the 1880s, these would be ready to go on our card because, you know, they would be bright, shiny new. However, I wanted to give it a more vintage look. I'm going to see if you can tell the difference between these two. Can you tell the difference that one is uh, more shiny and one is less shiny? This is the, the piece that I haven't done anything with, and then this is what I've sponged. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to grab these two pieces and we're going to distress them a little bit. So we need a little bit of scrap paper and we are going to take our soft suede ink and then we'll just grab a sponge here and we're just going to go just like this over the top. We're just going to sponge a little bit of soft suede over the top. Nothing fancy, but we just want to rough it up, make it a look a little bit more vintage. Now, as the ink dries, it will sort of, I don't know, it sort of fades a little bit, so it isn't quite as intense as it is when you first put it on, but it looks really nice. So you can see how that vintaged it up a little bit. All right, so now we can go ahead and we can just, um, let me sit down here. We can just go ahead and start putting our card together. So I'm going to flip this over. We're going to add some multi-purpose liquid glue to the back. And then we'll set this right here and give that a press. And then we're going to do the exact same thing here with this second card. So here we go. We have our tiles on. Now the next thing we're going to do is we need we need to do a little stamping. So the pieces that we're going to stamp, let me show you, and I did pre-do a little bit here, but our inside panel is going to be four by five and one quarter, and this is in very vanilla. So then again, we're going to take our soft suede because all the sentiments on this card are done in soft suede. So we'll take our soft suede ink, and we're going to take our inside sentiment, which I have simply thankful for all the good things, is what the inside is going to say. And we'll just put this right here. Let's see, I think I want to stamp with my, with my Stampin' Mat. So we'll get this all set up, set this in, give it a second for that ink to transfer onto our paper. And it looks great. And we're going to do it again. And we'll set this right in like so. Beautiful. Look how good that looks. All right. So we have the inside panels done. And I did go ahead and do some coloring here. But I don't need to show you that because I'm going to show you that in a minute. Because you do the inside the exact same way that you would do your outside. So now we're just going to take a little bit of snail and run it along the top. And then we're going to set this in and we'll have our inside panels done. Uh-oh. Hopefully this won't be a problem. I just, stuck, I just stuck a panel to the back of my card. There we go. We got it off. Have you guys ever done that where you, you know, lay your card stock right down in the ink pad or, or stick two things together that you didn't mean to? Sometimes it just... Um, it just happens. Most of the time we can save it if we haven't burnished too hard yet, but sometimes, you know, you just have to be careful of that, which I was not. All right, so now let's go ahead and start stamping these inner pieces here. So this is two and a half by four and a half. And again, I'm going to grab my stampin', my stampin' mat here. And we are going to take some basic gray ink. And we're going to ink up this lovely milk can. I think the milk can is quite a hot seller for this stamp set. Then we're just going to set it down here. You want to keep it pretty close to the bottom because you have a lot of floral going up and you also have a clip up here. So you don't want your, your milk can too high. So 
just show you how that's done again. So make sure you're keeping it plenty close to the bottom. And that looks great. All right, then the next thing to do is to grab our, we're going to be using crumb cake ink and we're going to do our florals on that. So let me grab the florals. And what's nice about these florals is there's really not that much coloring to it. So I need to stand up because you want to make sure that you have your floral actually resting right on top of the milk can. If, if anything else, make sure it goes even a little bit past that lid because you don't want it floating above. That's the, that would just look weird. So we're going to try again here. And that looks good. Perfect. Now what we can do is we're going to grab some Stampin' Blends and I'm just going to color one of these. So we have two new Stampin', well we have quite a few new Stampin' Blends, but two of them that we're going to be using today are, are actually debuted in the Holiday 2018 catalog. So one of those colors is Cajun Craze. You can purchase it as a, as a combo set. And you can also purchase that as a combo set. Now I'm using both of the light ones. And what I love about the Mango Melody is that it really gives a good pop of yellow. And so I'm just going to show you what I mean by coloring in just a few little dots here. So you can see just how much this yellow pops. And I'll hold that up to the camera so you can see. And it's really awesome. It's really, really bright. Much better in person, I'm sure, than on camera. Then what we're going to do is take the Mango Melody again, and we're just going to color in the centers of these sort of, I have no idea what they are, but they're, they're what you see in the fall, kind of the fall um, bouquets that you pick up at Michael's and places like that. I know they don't grow them here in Minnesota, whatever they are. I've never seen them. But uh, we don't usually have cotton in Minnesota either. So I think this might be just a hint more southern than what I'm used to working with. Then I'm going to take the light rich razzleberry and we're going to color in this. We're just doing one little bit of rich razzleberry. So that's going to be this little flower right there. And then we'll take the Cajun Craze and we're just going to outline that flower. So again, nothing too um, tricky with coloring. I know you can use Stampin' Blends and really make them look awesome, but I kind of just use them as markers and call it good enough. So here is the, um, what's this one? This is our Light Old Olive. And for this particular card, I'm just going in and we're going to color a bunch of leaves here. We're actually even going to color some leaves where, you know, I don't even think there is leaves, but I, I want it to be leaves all the way down this side. So I think these might be cotton balls, but I'm coloring them as leaves. And then here's a little bit. And again, I think that's supposed to be an airspace, but I'm making it a leaf. So you can do whatever you want. You can just, um, you know, Make it look the way you want it to look, which is what I'm doing. So there we have all of our leaves colored in the light old olive. Then we're going to take the dark old olive and using the fine tip here, just going to add a little bit of, I don't know, contrast to these leaves so they look a little more real, a little more leafy. There. I think that's about it. Is that it for coloring? I think it is. So just that quickly, we've colored our florals. Then we can take um, Smoky Slate, and this, again, is our light Smoky Slate. And we're just going to add some color here along at the top. And kind of wherever you see a little bit of, um, you know how they put lines on things? That's kind of your, your clue that that's a good place to color. And that's about all I'm going to do. You don't want to overdo it. And so there we go. Then what we're going to do is we're going to bring our soft suede back into the picture here. And we're going to grab our sponge and we're just going to sponge these edges. Give it kind of a more vintage look. 
Let's rough it up. And there we are. So this is ready for our card. So let's go ahead and we'll put this down onto a piece of rich razzleberry. And this is two and three fours by four and three fours. So here we go. We're just going to take this and we're going to use some snail to attach it onto our rich razzleberry panel here. And we'll just set this in. Make sure all four corners are, or all four borders are nice and even. We'll flip that over. And then we have one more little bit of stamping to do. So I'm going to bring in again my, uh, my soft suede. And then I've got this, which we're going to put on the outside of the card. It says, Happy Harvest Blessings. So to prepare that, I've got one prepared, but I'm going to prepare one for you so you can see how to do it. We have a half inch by three and one fourth inch panel of crumb cake. And what I'm going to do is just take my little snips from Stampin' Up! and I'm just going to snip right in the middle, just a tiny little bit up, and then I can go in from each side and create a little pennant look. Now you can do this with punches too, but because I want this to be exactly a certain size, I want it to just exactly fit my uh, sentiment. I just wanted to do it with the scissors because I have a little bit more control and I'm making sure that it's exactly three, four, three and one fourth inches wide. So now we'll go ahead and we will grab our sentiment, ink it up, and then I'm going to stamp that. So again, I'm going to have to stand up. And this is pretty much exactly the same height as the taller uh, harvest is here. So you may get a little bit of a bleed off, but that's okay. So it's stamped pretty good. It's pretty nice when it's um, our photopolymer stamps because you can see right through them to know exactly where you're going with it. And you'll notice I give it a little time to let the ink kind of fall into the paper. There we go turned out great. Okay, so shall we get going on assembling these cards? So let me uh, grab the card base back in here. Get this out of the way. And here is one panel, and then I mentioned that I had prepared another panel in advance. So these are, um, what we need to do next is take our little clip that looks like this, and what I did is I took a galvanized clip and then I took 12 inches of the braided linen trim and you can do one of two things you can either put it on the back I'll do both you can put it on like this so that it clips through both layers or if you just want it clipped onto the vanilla layer so what I did here is I ha I'm gonna show you how to tie the bow you can just go in and add it to the vanilla layer, just like this. So it's whichever look you want. Both of the looks look nice. Then to, um, it's easier to tie it actually once, once that clip is down, just because it's a little fussy if you're trying to do it when the clip is not attached to anything. So there we go. And the reason I use 12 inches of thread is I want kind of a, I don't know, it looks a little more elegant to have this big loopy bow up here, I think. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some dimensionals. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set this in so that the right, top, and bottom all have the same size border. So let me make sure that's going to look good. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. The top, the bottom, and the right, all the same size border. Fantastic. Okay, now what we need to do is just put our Happy Harvest on. So the way we're going to do that, so we're going to layer this up. So we're going to put two dimensionals on this end where the Happy is. And I literally mean two dimensionals. So we're going to take the peely off this side and then we're going to layer one more up 
because I don't know if you remember this, but I did do this on a layer. So we want to make sure that the, the part of our sentiment that's going to be off the card a little bit, we want to make sure that is supported. And then the middle section has one dimensional. And then this other section here has just one dimensional. All right. So we'll peel this all off and you'll see what I mean in a second. So we're going to set this so that the, um, the double dimensional on this side is off the main panel here where we have our image. We're going to set that just like that so it's, it's going up at an angle and it kind of covers part of the milk can. Then we're going to do the same thing with the other card. So now what we're going to do again is take this left side that has the double dimensionals and then we're going to set this so that our sentiment is going up. And we have a beautiful Thanksgiving card. So I hope you've enjoyed this so much. I've truly enjoyed having you here today. Thank you for uh, joining in. Be sure if you are interested in learning more about this card, I'll have it up on a blog post. And you can place your Stampin' Up! orders there to get your very own set of country home stamp set and then all of the lovely things that we use today to create this card. Have a great day. I truly appreciate you. Bye-bye.